Maker, this is Claire from Eclair Makery, and today I am going to be teaching you how to crochet my latest crochet pattern, my desert cactus top and dress. This is a really fun beginner level color pattern that you can do using either tapestry or intarsia crochet. It features simple color work of cacti and diamonds. Very, very basic color work to make sure that if you've never done color work before, that this is a great practice piece to make. Now this pattern is available as a tank top. You can have it as a peplum top with this cute little ruffle, or you can have it as a dress. This pattern is super, super customizable to exactly what you want and what you need for your body type and how you want this to look overall. And let me tell you, it is so much fun to create color combos for this. You've got to check out all of my tester versions on my blog post. All of their versions were so much fun. They used so many different colors and textures for their patterns. And it just is a pattern that really helps you capture yourself in colors. It's so much fun. If you want to follow along with the Frige version of this pattern that has all of the different options in it, you can find that at the description box below with the link for my blog post that has a free pattern. And it's also available as a premium discounted PDF on all of my shops and on Etsy and Ravelry, and it will have all the charts in there as well. Be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button as well so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming uh, free patterns and video tutorials. And let's go ahead and get started on this. To make this pattern, you're gonna need a few different things. You will need a weight two yarn in three different colors. I'm using Lion Brand Beautiful You Yarn, which is a weight to yarn, it, and I'm using it in rooibos tea, cypress, and arrowroot. You'll also need a size 4.5 millimeter crochet hook, and then you'll want to make sure that you pay attention to the amount of yarn that you'll need for your size in order to make this pattern. To begin your desert cactus top, you are going to start by chaining the amount of stitches for the front panel piece, and then you will do two rows of double crochets. When you're working off of your chain, you will start in the third chain from the hook, since you're doing double crochet stitches, and then you will do your two rows of double crochet. So once you are done with the, those foundational rows there, and some sizes might have three rows of double crochet on here, but we're going to do two for this size. Then we are going to start by chaining two, and then each size will start with a different amount of double crochets that you will do to start your row. For the extra small size, which is the one I'm making right now, I am going to start by double crocheting eight stitches. This is going to set up the part of our um, first row of color work here, and then we will start using the chart for the cacti from this point forward. So I've got five stitches there, then six, seven, and eight. And on this eighth stitch, what I'm going to do is I am going to take a stitch marker here and I am going to put it in this stitch. This is going to let me know that while I am doing my cacti, I am going to always do this amount of double crochets before I begin my color work. So I put it in that eighth stitch to mark, okay, after this stitch, we will begin doing the chart. So then once you have marked this stitch right here, you are going to want to grab the graph that is available for free in, on my blog or in the ad-free PDF um, that you can get in my shops. And then we're going to look at how many stitches on this chart that we do before the color work. So we start here by doing four of the yellow stitches and then we add green stitches. And then after that, it does the yellow, green, yellow, green, and yellow, and then finishes off our row. And then when you do the color work, you are gonna just follow all of the different um, boxes on here to tell you what you do for each stitch. Each box counts as one stitch. So this will translate to being on your top. So we're gonna start by doing the four stitches here. Three and four. And on 
on this last stitch, what we are going to do is instead of finishing off the stitch with our yellow yarn, we are going to take our green yarn here and we are going to join this to our pattern. So how you do that is you take your new color of yarn and then you loop your hook on it and you pull it through those last two loops of the stitch. You always do color changes on the last um, yarn over of each stitch that you do. Once you have that um, yarn color changed, what we're going to do is start doing the green stitches here on the chart. So one of the tricks that I like to do to help avoid weaving in ends on my designs is I like to make my end that I've just um, that I have from just joining this yarn and I like to use it for my first stitch. So what I'll do is I will yarn over with both of the strands of yarn and then I will do my first stitch with both of those strands and this way I don't have to worry about weaving in the end later and then it doesn't really change the size of the stitch at all you just will have your first green stitch there for the color work. Now what you can do with this color work for this pattern is you can use either tapestry crochet or you can use intarsia crochet. So when you do intarsia crochet, you will use things called bobbins or just little balls of yarn like this and you will join your yarn at each point where you have a color change. So if you were to use intarsia crochet for this design, you would stop using your yellow yarn here, join your green yarn, and then when we have this yellow yarn here joined again, we would add a yellow bobbin, join that yellow bobbin there, and then use it for these stitches, join a new green bobbin, use yellow stitches, and then a green bobbin, and then your last yellow one. So that will help give you a nice clean look to your pattern. It won't show up any of the yarn through the stitches, and it will make it look nice and neat. It will mean that you have to manage a couple different colors of yarn and a couple different balls of yarn at the same time, so they can tend to get a little bit tangled. But if you want a nice clean look to your top or dress, then you should use intarsia crochet. If you don't want to use intarsia crochet and you just want to stick to managing just these um, two balls of yarn, the yellow and the green, then you can use tapestry crochet. When you do tapestry crochet, what you will do is you will carry your yarn as you work. So you'll hold up your yellow yarn to the top of your stitches right here. And then as you do each of these green stitches, you will carry your yarn through those stitches at the very bottom. So then you won't have to worry about um, managing a bunch of different yarns, <laughs> uh, a bunch of different yarn bobbins at the same time. So let's double check here how many stitches we do for the cactus. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches across. So I've got my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops. And then if I'm using tapestry crochet, then I will do this last stitch here. And then I will use this yarn that I've carried and use it to switch colors again. If you are doing intarsia crochet, this would be the point where you would add in another yarn bobbin of the yellow yarn. But since I'm just doing tapestry crochet for this, I will be carrying my yarn through all my stitches. And that's essentially how you just do this pattern. You will be switching colors to do the cactus chart, and then we will, once you're done with the cactus chart, then we will join in our orange section and do the diamonds. So when you are done with your cactus portion of your top, it's time to switch to our second contrast color. So on the last, very last stitch of the last row with your main color, you are going to take your second contrast color, which mine is my orange yarn, and I am going to do, do the last yarn over of that stitch with my contrast color. Then I am going to chain two and turn my work here 
and then I am going to do my first decrease row. So as soon as you move into this upper portion of the top, you begin doing decreases at the beginning of each row. Some sizes will have one decrease and other sizes will have two decrease decreases at the beginning of the row and then you'll do the same thing on the end of your row. So if you have a size that's doing um, two, then you, two decreases per row, you'll have one decrease at the beginning, one decrease at the end. If it's four decreases per row, you'll have two at the beginning and two at the end. So my size, the extra small, does two decreases per row, so I will start my row by doing one decrease. So you do your double crochet decrease by yarning over and basically starting an entire double crochet stitch, but instead of yarning over for the last um, yarn over, you're going to move to the next stitch and then you finish it off like so. Then once you've done that decrease, then you will double crochet over to the last two stitches or last four stitches if you have two decreases at the beginning and end, and then you will complete your first row before we move on to the diamonds. Once you have that first row of decreases done, and then we are going to start on our diamond rows. So I am going to chain two and turn, and then this is the point that we will start using the diamond chart for the pattern. So if you're following along um, using the pattern on my blog, you'll start using this pattern and it's worked from the bottom up. Depending on your size, you will start either from the right or the left and work up, but um, all of the diamonds are the exact same size, the same width from the edge of the chart, so you'll be able to follow along with this no matter if you're starting on the right side or wrong side and right or left. It'll all turn out exactly the same. So since my size is starting with my diamonds on the wrong side, what I did is on this last row, I carried my yellow yarn that, um, cause I just don't like joining new colors of yarn, um, new balls of yarn to have more ends to even. So I carried my yarn all the way across my row and then I left it at the point where I'm going to start using it for um, the diamonds. So we're gonna do it very similarly to how we did the cactus. Um, but this time we start out with our uh, decrease here and I'm just doing one for my size like I did on the first row. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my row by double crocheting nine stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, Gotta get that yarn unwound. <laughs> Four, five, and then I'm going to carry my yarn since I miscounted a little bit. Um, six, seven, eight, and then on the ninth stitch, what I'm gonna do is like we did on our cactus rows, what we're going to have on here is we are going to put our stitch marker on this last stitch before we begin doing the chart. So since I'm on the wrong side, I'm gonna flip my um, cactus over and then just insert it so that it stays on the right side. And then you'll do the same thing once you're done with the diamond chart. So then I am gonna keep carrying my yarn and I'm gonna do the first three stitches right here. So one, two, three, um, orange stitches. One, two, and then three. And then on that third one, I am going to, um, well, we've got to get that one yarn over done. <laughs> then I'm going to switch over to my yellow and then do my one yellow. And when you have just one stitch that you are doing, you end that you change colors the exact same way. So then I'll just switch back to my orange yarn on my last yarn over. And but when you are working on the wrong side, I really recommend doing a yarn under instead, like I just showed you with this one. Um, that just helps the color transitions to be a little bit better. And then what you'll do is you'll just continue doing the diamond chart and on each row remembering to do your decreases on there um, until we get to the end of this front panel. 
And um, on the other side of the chart when you're finished, make sure to put that stitch marker on there so that you can mark where you need to start and stop your color work and following the chart. So once you reach the end of the front panel of your top, what we're going to do next is we are going to work on forming the straps before we start working on the back panel, which is worked off of this entire piece because this whole thing is made in one piece. We just do a little seaming on the sides. So we have to make the straps in order to be able to move on to the back piece. So all you're going to be doing for the straps is we are going to be doing a chain two, turning our work, and then we are going to do some double crochets here. I want my straps to be a little bit thicker, so I am going to do about 10 double crochets. And then I am going to turn that, so I won't go all the way on this row. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then what I'll do next is I will chain two and turn, and then we will double crochet 10 across. You can make your straps as thick or as thin as you want. If you even want to, um, do like spaghetti straps or th like thick straps like I'm doing. It's really customizable for what you want to do. And then you will just continue repeating this, doing the double crochet two, turning and then going across till you've reached the length of strap that you want. I am going to be doing my straps to be about six inches long. And then I will show you how to join on this other side so that you can make the straps on that side. Now that my straps are, are about six to seven inches long, I'm now going to fasten off this orange yarn that I've been working with. And we are going to start working the other sleeve. So I'm just gonna fasten this sleeve off and then we will come back to this strap once we are done with the one on the other side. So to start doing the one here on the other side, we're gonna take our little orange yarn. We are gonna insert our hook in this first double crochet that's on this side. We're gonna take our yarn, we're gonna loop it through, and then we are going to start by chaining two and acting like this is the beginning of a row. So we are going to do our first double crochet in that same stitch that we just did our slip stitch through on those chain two. And then we are going to repeat the same process that we did on the other strap where we're going to do 10 double crochets and then do the chain two and turn. So we're just working off of the stitches that we already have made on here. So I've got five stitches there. Then we'll do six. And as I'm doing this, because I don't like weaving in my ends later, I'm carrying my end with me so that I am effectively weaving in my end as I am doing my crocheting. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one last one for 10. Then we will chain two and turn, and then we are going to repeat the same thing, like I said earlier, that we did on the other strap until we get the strap about six to seven inches or whatever uh, length that you want your straps to be. And then we will start working on our back panel. So I have both of my straps done for my top and now it's time to join them together so that we can work on the back panel of this design. So how we're going to do that is we are going to chain two on this one. Uh, this is, I guess this would be um, the left pant, the left strap if I'm wearing this, but it's the right one if I have it laid flat. Um, so then I'm gonna chain two and turn it then we are going to double crochet across this as if we're doing a normal row. 
and then we are going to be using chain stitches in order to join these two things together. So we will be doing these double crochets here and then we, once we get to this last stitch, then we are going to chain, um, you'll chain the number that is written in the pattern for your size. For my size, um, I am going to be chaining 27 because how we come to that number is we take the top amount of stitches here on your front panel and then we subtract the amount that you do from the sleeves. So if you are doing thinner or thicker stitches, what you'll want to do is you'll want to take that number of stitches that's along the top here and then you'll want to subtract the number of each strap that is the width that you did. And then this way you know how many stitches to chain across so that then you can continue your back panel that is pretty much the same thing as the front panel, it's just on the reverse side. So I'm gonna chain 27, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Once I have chained those 27 stitches, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this chain over here and I wanna make sure that this chain is not twisted while I'm doing it because if I join these two together with the chain twisted, that's going to make the top of the back panel look weird. So if you have a hard surface that you are near, I would take your chain here and then you'll wanna lay it out so you can make sure that it isn't twisted when you join the two together. So mine looks kind of a little bit wonky, but that's just because I'm using such thin yarn. I think it looks good. And then I'm going to yarn over, and then we are going to go in this first double crochet on this other strap, and we are going to do one double crochet there, and then we've joined it together with this opposite strap. So then I'm going to double crochet across just like this to finish off this first strap. Just like this to have this. This counts as the first row in your back panel. And then once we have this, then we can start working on our back panel. And the thing with the back panel that's different than the front panel is that instead of decreasing on the orange portion of this top with that has the diamonds on it, this time you're gonna be increasing outward. So we are going to be growing the size of our back panel until we reach that edge where we just work straight down. And the thing, and another thing with this back panel as well is that there are no cacti, so it's a lot easier. You just are gonna do the diamonds on the top and then have the yellow portion on the bottom before we start doing the peplum ruffle at the bottom of this. So once we have this all joined together, we'll chain two and turn. And like I said, we're gonna start increasing. So what you'll do is in this first double crochet here, you are going to do two double crochet because we're increasing outward. And then we double crochet all the way across until we reach the last stitch where we'll do two double crochet on there. So every round on the chart that has, or every row on the chart that has the extra stitch on the end that makes it look like it's um, turning into a triangle, that means you are going to be doing an increase instead of a decrease. So you can use the exact same chart as the front panel, you'll just be doing the increases. And then once you get to the chain stitches here, you are going to do one double crochet in each of the chain stitches that are on this um, chain that we did until you get to the end. And then you just crochet like normal. Once you complete this row here, 
And then once you've finished that back panel, then we can start doing the peplum and get that cute ruffle going on this. I've now got my back panel as well as my front panel all finished. So now it's time to start seaming the sides up so that we can begin doing the peplum slash skirt for this. So if you are doing the top pattern, then we're gonna just do a peplum. So it'll be pretty short, but it'll be nice and ruffled. And you'll do the same start for the dress version, but we'll just continue it longer with that version. But before we do that, we are going to start by seaming up these sides. So how we'll begin doing that is we are gonna put our hook here and then we are going to fasten off this yarn um, so that we can have a nice clean edge when we are going to be doing the peplum portion of this. So we are going to leave a long tail for sewing. So I'm just gonna trim that yarn there. Then I'm gonna fasten this off and then we're going to seam up this side right here. So I'll flip this over and then what we'll do is we want to line up these two sides together. So you'll want to make sure that your yellow or um, body portion of this is lined up together and I am going to be doing the mattress stitch to seam up the sides of my top. So I am going to seam it right sides together. I am just going to be seaming all the way up to here where the yellow on my top ends. You can of course go further, but since this is where the straps and the bust start to decrease, I'm not going to sew past this. This way it fits nicely and um, a little bit more loose on my underarms, and then I don't have to worry about it being too tight. So let's go ahead and start on this. Because we uh, have the yarn already fastened to the top, we don't need to make a knot in this. We just thread our yarn needle and then we will begin seaming. You can of course use pins to make sure that you pin your top at the right points so that it doesn't come apart while you're making it, but I'm not gonna pin it today since um, it's not too long of a piece and I'll just make sure that it is always lined up with each other when I am um, seaming this together. So to begin doing the seaming portion, we, I'm gonna take my yarn needle here and I'm gonna insert it on the opposite side uh, through one of the bottom loops and then I am going to insert it through one of the loops on the side there, making sure that it's in there that. Then we're going to come up through the bottom of the other side and we are going to repeat that same thing on this other side as well. So we'll seam it like that and then we are going to repeat that by going along the sides of these stitches. So you start basically making a zigzag across on this you go up through the different loops and then tighten it when you need to. And this helps create a seamless join so that it looks like you crocheted this all in one piece. And the great part about this seaming is that you've already done pretty much all the work for yourself. The color work helps it um, show where you're gonna start and stop on your seaming and it's just all on one side so you don't have to do any complicated folding. You just line up your edges and then keep crocheting as you go up this. So you can of course use any seaming method you would like to. I have a tutorial here on my YouTube channel that you can use to do that um, if you can find your favorite way, but you'll see it looks like these are all just one piece. You can't even tell that this is seamed, which is why I love this join so much. So then you'll go ahead and seam up both sides of your top and then we will begin on the bottom portion. My top is now all seamed together on both of the sides. I'm so excited about it. So one thing that you can do with this pattern is if you would like it to just be a cropped version, you can just leave this pattern as is. You don't have to do the dress version or the peplum top version, you can just keep it like this and it will look super cute, fit you great, 
it'll look awesome. But if you would like to continue at the top and do the ruffled peplum on the bottom or do the dress that continues the peplum after, then you're going to want to do the following. So what I'm going to be doing with um, this top is I will have just pretty much one main color for the um, peplum ruffle and then as I do the dress version I'm going to add some of these other colors like the dark um, green and this mustard as well. And I, you can do stripes. It's totally customizable to what you want to do. I'm just going to play with the colors and see what happens, but it's really a great expression of yourself as you make this bottom part of, you could even have on the peplum have some stripes on there. It's totally up to you. You just play with it and have a ton of fun. What we'll do is we'll flip our top over so that it is on the right side. Then we're going to come over here. You can start on either seam. I'm just going to start on this one. And then I'm going to insert my hook in the first stitch of that row. And actually, you know what? Let's insert it in this seam right here. So you could insert it on the first stitch of the row or you could insert it in this seam. Then I'm going to do a slip stitch to join my yarn here. We're still going to be having the rest of this be seamless, so you only ever have those two seams that we did on the top. So then we're gonna chain two, and then once we have those chain twos, we're going to start crocheting around the bottom edges of our top. So what we'll do is we're going to do a one double crochet in the next stitch, but we're going to do this in the front loop only. And all of the stitches on this round are going to be through the front loop, front loops only because this way it gives us a more distinct edge and helps the peplum pop out a little bit. So then in the next stitch, we're going to double crochet two in the same stitch around that front loop. And then we will repeat this all the way around doing one double crochet and then two double crochets around the entire thing until we get to the very beginning. Once you have this first round of the bottom of your top done, we will join it to the second chain with a slip stitch and then we'll begin the second row. And now in this row, we're going to do another round of the increases to get a little bit more of a ruffled um, overall look for this portion of the top. But if you don't want to have it be super ruffled, you can just start doing the rows of double crochet till you reach the length that you want it. And it will be the same thing for if you're doing the dress as well. So once we've chain two to start this row again, then we are going to do two double crochet. This one's not done in the front loops only. And then we'll do two double crochet in the next stitch. So for this round, the repeat is two double crochet and then two double crochet in the next stitch. So you'll be doing a total, you'll be using a total of three stitches and then having a repeat where you're making extras. Now if you want to do a bigger ruffle on your um, bottom portion of your top and you'd like it to have more of a wavy edge, what you can do is you can add another increase round after this one where you do three double crochet and then a double crochet increase. But if you like it the way this way, same thing if you like the ruffle amount on the first round, you can just leave it like this and then get it to the ruffle amount that you want and then start working your double crochets. This is the same thing for the dress. Basically, once we get done with this round, we're just going to be doing rows of double crochet till we reach the length. But if you would like your um, skirt on your dress to be a little fuller or you need to account for like maybe your hip size versus the um, fit that this has, then you can just keep doing increase rounds. You could even do it where you have one increase round, then a double crochet round, and then an increase round and a double crochet round. But I'll show you how to add that towards the end of the peplum if that's what you would like to do. And um, basically, once you're done, reach the length of double crochet rows with this version, then you can just stop and your top is done. 
So when it came to doing the peplum um, portion of my top, what I did is I did about five rows of my orange color as that base for starting the peplum. Then I did two rows of the yellow, and then I did about five rows of the green. So you can really do the, whatever thickness of striping that you want, do whatever amount of rows you wanna have for this. Um, if you want to continue to increase it out, I only did two increase rows for my um, top design. That gave it a little bit more ruffle. You can also just do one row of increases um, but if you want more rows of increases just keep doing the double crochet one and then the increase that you do all the way around and then you can get extra shaping for the waistline if you want to do dress and you're a little curvier and need um, a little bit more room in your dress but otherwise you can just do those two um, increase rows like I did and it totally works for a dress. Um, for the dress I just continued having fun with the striping so I did a, a larger portion of the green and the large portion of the yellow and the orange and you can really make this dress portion as long as you want. It's super um, easy to just customize the striping and have this totally be up to you with the length and the fit overall. I really, really hope that you enjoyed making this pattern. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you don't already so that you don't miss out on any of my pattern tutorials coming up. And I really would love to see all of the tops and dresses that you make. So be sure to tag me on social media at eclairmakery. That way I can share all of your beautiful projects. I can't wait to show you all of the fun upcoming patterns that I have for the rest of this year, and I hope that you have so much fun crocheting this design. Until next time, I will see you later, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye! Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like it below if you enjoyed watching it, and hit the subscribe button if you never want to miss out a video from me, and also check out my other videos and tutorials on my channel. See you next time!